bring up God's servant, Apostle Matthew Uluajoba as he begins at us. the Lord. Please let's give our hands of praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please welcome your neighbor. Say I welcome you one more time. Once again, you are welcome into the presence of God. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We have every cause to give praise to God Almighty for giving us another opportunity so that we can come together yes during this conference or uh, this convention um i want to salute my host or let me just say my hosts <laughs> so i want to salute to reverend and reverend mrs uh <clears throat> adeshalam i want to say thank you so much thank you for inviting us thank you let's put our hands together and wherever mama is mother in israel i want to salute you thank you so much um, we, 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 we really appreciate God for because I believe that God specifically wanted this meeting wanted me to come for this meeting and um, I have to thank God for what the Lord is doing in this assembly Redemption Family Church we are going higher, we are moving higher we are doing well, we are going better and I know that we are here to depopulate the kingdom of darkness and to populate the kingdom of God that is what redemption family church stands for to populate his kingdom to increase to bring life yes to the dead soul and uh, to win hundreds, millions of souls to the kingdom of God may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and I believe that this convention will be more glorious in Jesus name reverend thank you so much the Lord bless you really appreciate you we appreciate your simplicity, your humility, and your steadfastness in the kingdom of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, we have uh, I want to salute all my colleagues in the fire and all the fathers of faith. Um, let me just start from the father, our father in the land. So today, in fact, we have not spoken to each other, but we will be able to dress in the same color. Yes, in the same color. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that is Holy Spirit. <laughs> I had the intention of wearing something different. Uh, but 
See you. So <laughs> he just took this without measuring me. I just I cannot understand. So I have to honor him. Thank you so much. God bless you, Reverend. And Papa, Mr. Nichisa, let's just put our hands together for Baba Allah say them. Hallelujah. It's just because I want you to be able to identify whom I'm talking about. In our culture, we don't mention the name of our father. We just say our father. So, but if I say a father and I look at another person and love a father, another person and a father, we don't say which father is he talking about? Eh? So, Papa, we just want to salute you. We want to really, really appreciate you. Thank you for your steadfastness. We appreciate you for your prayers and uh, for standing by your, we, your children, standing by our side. Yes, because um, uh, probably maybe I, I won't be born by the time uh, you are calling to the ministry. So I thank you so much for your support, for your prayers, and for your spiritual backup. Because I can see that it's happening. Since we have known you, if it has been our our first choice, yes. And thank you for accepting us. Thank you for receiving us. Thank you for your prayers. Everything to pray. So happy to give a hand of appreciation to Papa. Hallelujah. A blessing now i'm happy to see bishop today eh? we met together bishop you did something although my time has fast spent i don't want to talk much but you touched my heart during the time that we are preparing for our our grace yes um bishop made us to understand that in the last 30 years if i do make a mistake whenever I, on the day of, our, of his birthday he will always be at home praying to god he will not not going out nothing now the day of our meeting to have a meeting together with the chairman of the chairman of camp who f was his birthday so and he had to go before god's court i want to break this protocol oh lord who am i to break that kind of protocol for apostle yes just in order to meet me for 30 years that he has been doing he has to break that protocol this up in uh uh we want to appreciate you thank you so much put your hands together for the servant of the loving god thank you sir we appreciate you for everything because on that day i was just looking at ah ah but uh this is it's so touching and it's touched my heart thanks so much and also a man of god who really really is a father also in this land who really really supported us for our grace journey three uh, Grace 2023. I just want to salute Reverend Ojuku. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate you. God will continue to use you for His kingdom in Jesus' name. When we got to His office, He really was relaxed. He could be able to tell us so many things. And uh, we also learned. We also learned. And if that's what it, discipline is in the kingdom, I believe all this rascal. Pastors, all these, uh, all these terrible ministers, they will not be in the ministry. I think every ministry has to go in that form. They have a standard, and I love that standard. I spoke to us, and the Lord bless you more in Jesus' mighty name. Moreover, all my ministers uh, follow me. Uh, our national chair, person for the city changes, uh, he, uh, followed me here this afternoon. Bishop Shamsi, God bless you. Brother Shamsi, God bless you. Brother Shamsi, you are Bishop also. Amen. The African coordinators for our city changes global. Uh, Pastor Tego, additional. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yes, I mentioned Bishop because you told me that he is a Bishop. So I was. <laughs> and uh, my son that I just finished, that is our director of operations, uh, CMI Worldwide. And that is Pastor GD for United Kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Um, and I want to really appreciate the choir. Thank you for your service. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that has been planning or the planning committee for this convention, may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And all ministers of God, thank you for coming. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. 
praise the Lord. Please, let's just keep. I don't want to take much of your time because we're supposed to finish for two o'clock. So I will try whatever I can do so that I can finish on time. So thank you so much. Um, in the book of um, John, chapter fourteen, in verse twelve, uh, that's the that's the uh, the theme for this convention. And what okay, Jesus said that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him, he said, This same work that I do, he shall he also shall do, and greater works than this. He said, Before because uh, I am going to the Father, because I go to the Father. And it's not just sitting down before the Father. It's interceding for us. Praise the Lord. So today, in this message of uh, greater works than this, greater work than this, there is, uh, I want to have uh, what they call subtitle. And that subtitle is that our hope is not lost. My hope is not lost in the kingdom. My hope is not lost in my kingdom. In His kingdom, my hope is not lost in His war. My our hope is not lost over this country, Nigeria. Our hope is not lost. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to let you understand why do I put that subtitle. The word that our Lord Jesus Christ said in 2000 years ago, it was a message of hope because he was promising us. And when there is a promise, there is hope to put on it. He said, Whoever believes in me, this word shall he also do. By that time, the apostles of Jesus Christ had not yet been doing it. And it's a greater work than this. So it means that it's a promise, was a promise. And when a promise is released, hope is set up on it. Every year, our president will bring their manifestos, the governors will bring their manifestos, their budgets. We will do this, we will construct this road. We will do this infrastructure. All these infrastructural facilities will be done in this local government, this local government, this city. Now, when all these budgets are read, people set their hope on it. We set our hope on it. We just feel, oh, our area we have a new transformer because the governor has said it. Our road will be reconstructed. Or will be constructed or will be amended because the governor has said it. So now the governor of governors, the president of presidents, Jesus Christ the righteous, has now spoken to we his children. And what he said is that greater works and deeds that ye also do. And what does it mean? It means that he has promised us. And one thing I know is that his promise is forever sure. And all of us have to set our hope on it. <clears throat> and our hope over this world is not lost. Our hope over Nigeria is not lost. Because it's still going to be better. Now, may I say this before I continue? If your hope is lost about Nigeria, I want you to listen to me carefully. Probably you will get uh, a bet. You will get you will, your 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 heart, your mind will be renewed through through this message. But if you have made up your mind that Nigeria can never be better, there is no reason why you have to be in this meeting. If we still have hope that Christendom can be transformed, after all, the government they are running today was set up by 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 the church. CMS. When the missionary came to this, to came to invaded, invaded uh, Africa, they are the one who brought the government. They brought hospitals. They brought schools. 
they brought uh, justice, they brought uh, judiciary, judiciary, they brought health, they brought health program, everything was set up by Christ, by Christians. Now, the Christians who set it up, they have taken them out of the way. I have realized that in every state, uh, when someone is going for gubernatorial ele as election, they will just say, by the time he wants to become a gubernatorial candidate, we we'll just look at, uh, are you a Christian? Are you, especially in this West, are you a Christian or Muslim? They want to support the Muslim, they don't want to support the Christian. They want to send uh, the original owner out of the land. Let me say this to you. It doesn't matter the numbers of people that are built on the land. It doesn't matter the numbers of people, how powerful they are, how great they are. It doesn't matter how much they have spent on the land. The man who has the sea of all is the original owner. We are the one who have the sea of all. We have the certificate of occupancy and we have to occupy. We have to move. We have to excel the owner of the sea of See, they can issue different kinds of survey in this kind of Nigeria. But I have never heard it. We are two sea of O is being issued on the same land. One sea of O is for one land. A land is with sea of O. One sea of whoever has the sea of O, sea of O is the owner. We are the one who have the sea of O. We are the one who have the power. We are the one who set it up. We are the original owner of Nigeria. We are the original owner of the land. We are the one to govern. We are the one to rule. We are the one to make things happen. We are the one to change things. We are the one to change situation. We are the one to change the city. We are the one to change the country. And there is nothing anybody can do against it. Without us, nothing can happen. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand of praise. You may not understand what I'm saying here, but let me say this to you. I will use three example for you before I continue. For you to know that we are the owner. Why things are not happening is because we have not yet entered there. Now, don't make a mistake when you say, but there are some Christians there now. There is a Christian, there is one that there might not be Christians. I'm talking about born again. I'm not talking about God, church goers. I'm not talking about people that have lost it. They are just camouflaging because of name. You are not a Christian because you are Matthew, because of your name. You are not a Christian because you come from a family of the priest. You are not a Christian because you come to church. You are not a Christian because you serve. You are not a Christian because you serve in the church. You are not even a Christian because you hold the Bible and you are preaching. You are a Christian when you have given your entire life to Jesus Christ. When you have given your entire life, when you have put yourself or brought yourself to a point of no return, regardless of what you are facing, Jesus Christ is Lord. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Why am I saying that we are the one to bring things up? Matthew 5 verse 13. Jesus said, you are the salt of the world. You are the salt of the world. So, have you ever seen a cook who can cook? No women, you are here. Can you cook and make it sweet without the salt? And that's why everybody is just wasting. They are putting effort to our government. They are putting effort, putting effort. They have cooked very well, but there is no salt there. So, no matter what, how long, how numbers of years or of, of, sorry, numbers of hours that you are spent to cook, no matter the kind of the ingredients that you use, once the salt is not there, it's tasteless. If this country will be tasteful, if this country will have a better taste, we are the one to do it. I say we are the one to do it. We are the we are the salt of the world. Praise the Lord. Number two, why you have to understand what I'm saying is that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus Christ said, He said, You are the light of the world. He didn't say that two people are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So now see what Isaiah 60, verse 2 says. He said, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. He said, For the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen in you. So with me that the whole earth is in darkness, but we are the light. We are going to bring the light. And when it is light, people don't stumble. But when it's dark, 
when it's dark people stumble in the darkness uh, yes a lot of things are happening here people are stumbling the government are stumbling raise it because they are walking in the darkness uh, we are going to bring light there somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah now the third reason why i believe is just because in john chapter 1 in verse 4 he said in him was life and the life was the light of men so if in christ was life or in christ is life so we that in christ we have life so we are the one carrying life if you want to make nigeria lively we are the answer if you want to make nigeria lively we are the answer and we are not just the answer christ is the answer somebody shout hallelujah so what i'm saying is that our hope is not lost in the ministry for everyone that is going through that is running the ministry in a, in a hard time with art art in a, a hardship let me just put it like that your hope is not lost your hope is not lost. god still say greater work than this shall you do now in the book of uh, proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 proverbs 23 verse 18 the word of god says he says surely there is a latter hand in new king james verse says surely there is a hereafter and your hope will not be lost original king james verse says surely there is a latter end and your expectation shall not be cut off and i pray today that your expectation will not be cut off i say your expectation will not be cut off in the name of jesus christ now we're talking about hope our hope that is not lost concerning what Jesus did, said. Because since he has said it 2,000 years ago, I've never seen anyone that have ever matched that standard talkless of doing greater than that. Well, we have seen men of God raising the dead, but I've never heard anyone that raised the dead that has been buried four days. Has never happened. So we have not yet matched that standard talkless of doing greater than that. But we have hope that is going to happen i said we have hope let me hear the man please don't be tired let me hear the man we have hope we have hope now what god is talking about is talking about our destiny jesus was talking about our destiny what we are destined for what we are destined for the word of God made us to understand in Romans chapter 8 in verse 29 to 31 the word of God said in Romans 8 in verse 29 he said for those that he for new this he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that Christ might be firstborn among many brethren and he continued he said moreover those that he predestined this he also called and those that he called this he also justified and those that he justified by study, these he also glorified now what does it mean Jesus was the Bible was talking to us about our destiny so when his Bible says we are going to do greater work than this is telling us that our destiny we are destined for it we are destined we are destined to turn life around we are destined to make things happen we are destined to change every situation can i hear the man from somebody i want to let you know that there are four pillars that host the building there are four pillars that host the building if you look at it that you look at it very well and there are four pillars that host the house and as there are four pillars that hold a building i want to let you know that there are there are, there are also four pillars to hold destiny to fulfillment men of god ministers of god take this one as your destiny that's what god said what jesus christ said greater work than this that's what you are destined for you are destined to do the work that he did and greater work than this now take it as your destiny as something that you are destined for and when we talk about it we need to talk about four pillars that holds 
a destiny to fulfillment and that is just what we want to discuss here and after that we will go in the next few minutes the first pillar that owns destiny is the pillar they call the renter pillar the renter pillar pillar of the parents let me say this to you everybody was born to a woman and bringing a man to this to the existence is the agreement between a man and a woman agreement between a man and a woman bring a child or bring bring a man to existence or causes a procreation so when a father or a mother when they receive their or when they receive their children every parent wants their children to excel every parent wants their children to move forward parents want their children to excel to succeed to make it to work and to do greater things even some parents will say my children will be greater than me and that's what jesus Christ also said that we will be greater than him parental pillar very very important now this parental pillar we are talking about doesn't really need to be your your biological parents so but as i was going to talk about the biological parents i will talk about the parent that i might be god children parent says so this is a godfather this is a godmother the role of a parent the role of a parent in life or the role of parents in life is so important especially good parents especially good parents when you read a, the, when you go into genesis chapter 24 and you read from verse 1 to 9 verse 1 made us understand that Abraham was old well advanced in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things God had blessed Abraham in all things now Abraham now wanted his son Isaac to get married and because he wanted him to get married he looked unto the ladies and unto the girls and unto the we unto the women of the Canaan. He said, I don't want my son to get married to this Canaanite woman. I don't want him to get married to a Canaanite woman. May I say this to you? Upon this, upon the things that can make a man to succeed in life, marriage must not be a mistake. A lot of giant people, great people. They crash, they fall <laughs> because they have a bad, ba because they have bad marriage. Let me say this to you: having money doesn't mean it's not the fulfillment of destiny. Becoming a king is not the fulfillment of destiny. Becoming a president is not the fulfillment of the destiny. Esther also became queen. And it, she did not fulfill that promise on time. He thought that yes, God has made me the queen. So he did, she did not know that there was a purpose for it. Making that purpose fulfilled is the fulfillment of your destiny. See a lot of presidents that they turn their country to hell. See a lot of governors that make their state to become rubbish to become a governor is not a fulfillment of destiny but it's a stepping stone to fulfillment but unfortunately a lot of people got there and when they got there they mess it up that's why Mordecai has sent a message to Esther ha. do not think that you will be more safe or more delivered than any other Jews Esther chapter 4 verse 13 14 he said if you completely remain silent this hour the deliverance and salvation of you will come somewhere else 
and you and your father's house will be destroyed but who knows maybe you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this that is that Mordecai was telling Esther about our destiny fulfillment of our destiny you are not just there as a, as a, as a queen you are there to fulfill the purpose of God to have a big church is not a problem but is the church fulfilling purpose that's what I said yesterday it's not about the size of your church it's not the size of your, of your organization but it is the size of your ministry that God looks unto your church might be so small your organization might be so small but the impact that you are giving unto people yes that is what God recognizes praise the Lord everybody then when we talk about presence so uh, after that in Genesis 24 I'm talking about from verse 2 to 9 Abraham now charged the head of his of house I don't want my son Isaac to marry any of these women go to my country go to my father's land get a wife for my son over there that is that is the that is the that is a, a good strategy for everyone that will fulfill a purpose see what happened to Solomon the end of Solomon it was when he started marrying foreign women that his, his, his wife turned his heart from God oh my God so marriage is so important in life everyone who has made a mistake God will correct it and everyone that has not made a mistake you will never make a mistake in the name of Jesus Christ a renter pillar everyone needs a father everyone needs a father and at times a father might not be a man it might be a woman I will use a good example Naomi was a father because he was a woman but he was a father to Ruth if not for Naomi Ruth wouldn't have become the mother of kings you are all ministers and you understand what I'm saying here when this when this parental pillar is wrong because it's one of the fun it's like when a foundation is destroyed what can the righteous do you see the love that Jacob showered upon his son I uh, upon his son what they call his neighbor Joseph so we are talking about parental pillar and you ministers of God stop being a pastor to your members be a father be a father can I just tell you privilege about it because majority of our pastors they are leaders I appreciate being a leader but I don't want you to stop being a leader I don't want you to stop in that air level be a father become a father become a father can I just use one example for you okay if we see the word of a father and the word of a leader Joshua was a leader when Joshua was going uh, Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 he said and if it seems proper to you to <laughs> choose whom you are going to serve today either the God of the out, the other side of the, ri of the river whom your father served and died or the God of the Amorites whose land you are living but as for me and my household we will serve the Lord that's the word of a leader a leader takes you there and he wants you to continue he just wants you to do it do it yourself, choose now see a father and when the children of Israel when they have done this evil and the Bible said Moses returned back to God Exodus 32 in verse 31 and 32 he said Lord God these people have done evil in your sight they because they have made a golden calf if you will forgive them it's okay oh Lord but if you will not forgive them blot my name from the record which you have written a father want to die for their children a father will not only preach in season he preaches 
out of season a father will not say because I want to take a rest and my, one of my children are in trouble a father looks for him a father will leave 99 sheep and he will look for the one that is lost that is what a father does a father will do everything to make a son be successful a leader will truly take you there the prophet of Africa is not about leadership that we are talking about but it's because we are his no father with due respect I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a politician but with due respect look, compare the current politician and the old politicians look at Chief of Africa first television in Africa first first uh, first stadium in Africa what is gay Liberty State uh, we are talking about uh, Sky Cocoa House Cocoa Board the first Nigerian house was bought by him in England cash free education at all free, free primary education when he was a premier he was not even a prime minister do you understand what I'm saying here this is what they call father and that was the reason why some people are still mentioning his name till today don't, I'm not preaching politics but because thank God it's not around he's <laughs> gone so it's not that I'm just away. but I'm speaking to you many people they say they are of his children they are his children but they are not don't be angry if you don't like that man that is not what I'm saying but I'm talking to you about a father you pastors become a father you need to be a father because somebody raised you and if you have a father you also must be a father like begets like praise the Lord life begets life I heard about the issue of Abad Macaulay these are the people who fought for the independence of Nigeria who are ready to, to die because of anything who has only one son and that son also died in the process of it I heard about and I learned about President Nelson Mandela when I went to South Africa I went to Konya Island about 15 years ago and they brought us there they said at Nelson Mandela I had opportunity to he said many times they want to release him but on a condition that he will not continue uh, proclaiming about appetite and he said anytime they want to release he said no <laughs> struggle continues struggle continues he was ready ready to die for his people it's not because he wanted to become a president but because his people were suffering they were in slavery and that was the reason why he wanted them to be free and he was ready to go for any land are you ready to go for at any land for your members the children of God in the church of nowadays they have become they have become illeg illegitimate we have all this kind of uh, different kinds of rubbish in the church now because there is no father they are all pastors pastors every pastor 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 so pastor so pastor, pastor. and even your members also can pastor good morning pastor no good morning daddy see the way I address our father here I say Baba on last side Baba I didn't say pastor I didn't say I, I don't relate with him like a pastor or pastor I relate to him as a father and that's why he also can do much thing for me because he knows that yes among all the children we have somebody are you a father even you are a mother you must be a father even a woman you must be a father Naomi was a father he played the role of a father to root and he made roots she made root to fulfill her purpose she made root to fulfill her destiny well are you also doing the same you must be ready the problem of Africa is not about leadership by leadership no fear of God please because there is no father ah Moses said Moses knew God he knew the strategy of God and he knew how to tap how to speak to God he knows God will not blot out anyone that is not against him he will not blot out his name no that's to God we have, we have, we, 
we have to treat if you are going to release these people fine if we not release them blot my name see the numbers of time god will just say clear yourself from this congregation i'm ready to consume them uh -uh. see what moses will say but egyptians will hear this and they will say because you have the power to take them out of egypt but you do not have the power to bring them to the promised land that's why you kill them in the, the destroy them in the wilderness and god also will say ah, Otomanio is his role. That's the role of a father. That's what a father will do. That's what a father will do. I think it was a time Moses, God said that I'm going to destroy this congregation. I want to, and I will make you a great nation. I think some people will just say, leaders, hey, yes, thank you, Father. He said, ah, but Father, the promise is not unto me, but it's to your Abraham. Remember Abraham, your, your friend. Remember Abraham. A father will always be on his knee pleading on behalf of his children. A father will always be on his knee pleading on behalf of his children. May I say something to us? Brother, maybe I'm going to close now <laughs> because I have four pillars, but I don't think the time can permit me. May I say something to you? I believe in, I believe in the power of God. But I believe there is a hereditary curse. I believe there is a generational curse. I believe there is a generational curse. The Bible made us understand in Genesis chapter 11. When you read uh, verse 27, 28, 29, it talks about the family of terror. And I believe in 38, the Bible says, and and Aaron died because he's before his father. You understand that? Aaron died before his father. Now, it was it had, they didn't realize that it's, a, it's an hereditary curse that there's going to it, that it's going to be premature death, untimely death. Now, his son, the only son he had, was Lot. Abraham took Lot, and they were going. But when that curse will speak on him, it was against Abraham. Now, Abraham told him to choose a place. Then he chose. He chose a place of death. Do you understand? He chose a place of death, Sodom and Gomorrah. And when the angel of Allah were going to Sodom and Gomorrah, they were ready to destroy everybody including lots but there was a father there was a father who pleaded who had already pleaded you are going to destroy <laughs> what of if we have 50 i will not destroy because of 50 40 no 30 no 20 no okay last time 10 because there's no 10 but because he had already pleaded that generational cause will have happened to him and he also will have died there have you forgotten in chapter 2 of uh, of, of first Samuel when a prophet went to Hela and he said there shall be no old man in this house now that generation of course entered into Abiata Abiata did very well as a priest he did very well but when that curse will ring on him why David was still alive he decamped and he went to the camp of Adonijah oh my god remember what Solomon said he said, if not because of the suffering that you have had with my father, when the time of his problem is affliction, you are the one going in and coming out and coming in and going out with him. Otherwise, I will have destroyed you here. He also will have died because the Bible says there will be no old man in that land. You Levites, you need to understand this. Sir. You can see how men of God will just die at 40. 30, 50, 30, 50. But today, by the authority of God, because of this truth, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. We, the Levite, we shall live long in the name of Jesus Christ. We reverse that cause. We reverse that cause. We reverse that cause in the name of Jesus. No one will die at 60, not 70, not even 80, not even 90, not even 100. He shall be 100 and beyond in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A father. That is what a father does. My son just minister here. 
he started with me 1998 in London he was in my house he had his own house but he would not go to his house he would stay with me he was my driver it's not that he, 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 he applies the driver out because he's had his masters by that time masters he worked in a bank a uh, backless bank but he will be my driver it will be my cook it will be my cleaner it will be my and he's the director of music by that time he will do everything i imparted on him when we come home we come home around 3 a.m and i will tell him i want to eat and he will go after the period after we finish eating we're going to start praying and we pray to 6 a.m so when we pray to 6 a.m everybody will go and sleep but he will not go to room he will sit down on the call on the couch that is where he's going to pass this one or two hours before he goes to work let me say this to you a father is a father when it is a father it's from their hearts you know how you love your children how you love you want your children to excel you know how you can borrow money to make them better to let to give them the best education that is what a father does sir. from this day forward i charge all of you become fathers in the name of jesus christ sir. become fathers in the name of jesus christ become fathers in the name of jesus christ and you will take the responsibility of how to be a father in the name of jesus christ may god bless you when david was going in second kings chapter one sorry first king first king chapter two first i i i don't know so first king chapter two in verse one and two he said the day draw draws drew near that david will die and he charged his son he said solomon my son i go into the place of all, all the earth he said be strong therefore and prove yourself a man be strong therefore and prove yourself a man let me say a true father will make his son to reign while he's still alive it's not after he had died now there will be commotion there will be a problem many ministries today if the if the founder or general messiah dies they don't know he's going to take over because there's no preparation for that if he's going to take over we don't know that's why problem in the church when some leaders die like that like overseer like uh founders then there will be commotion then the church will break and then when you see people that lord has not appointed but because they have been in the ministry for a long time they will just say no it's now my turn a miracle but a miracle should not be in the church a miracle can be in the politics but it should not be in the church do you understand what i'm saying a father will charge a father with a father pour out everything that he had he pour it onto his children ah the bible said and they and and abraham oh genesis 25 verse 5 abraham gave everything well, whatever he gave gifts to all the concubines but abraham gave all that he had to isaac his son <laughs> you know the son all nothing left nothing everything he offloaded everything when you become fathers you will see how transformation will come into your ministry oh this person had a problem hey let us solve it by himself i was was i there when he started that one no moses didn't do that he said no don't make me a great mission i don't need it make the children of abraham your friend a great nation because he was the one you promised let me say this to you look at the life of joshua and moses then joshua took them to the promised land but when he was going he gave them choices to make moses did not give them choices go and read when you read the Deuteronomy 30 31 32 33 30 do it to 33 you will see how deep how moses was really really oh my god touching them he said i call this evil if you will not serve god he did not say choose who we are going to serve go and look it very well moses did not tell anybody he did not give anybody a choice to make you don't have choices you must do this that was he told them do you understand what i'm saying very very important if this is the only thing i want to preach here become a father just go and be a father devote more time i know you are trying but to be a father is not it's not easy 
when you be a father, you broke, you break every protocol. Like what Bishop Olujibade did. He said, Ah, I have to be there. That's when you see the spirit. You break protocol. This is your protocol by now. You must be in bed. A father doesn't do that. A father doesn't sleep. Oh. A father doesn't sleep. Let me say, God made me to rescue a woman in London. When I was in London, he's a member of our church. At 1 a.m., the Holy Spirit said, I should call her. I said, should call her. In fact, what God said I should do, we didn't even do it. He said, call her and pray for her. And I said, this woman might have been sleeping by this time. She was close to 60 by that time, maybe like 58. Then I called. When I called her around 1 a.m., the woman said, Baba, Baba, you called me. I said, Yes. She started praying for me. She started, it was releasing prayer, prayer, prayer. God told me to pray for you. Why are you praying, one praying for me? He said, You don't know what you have done to me. I said, What? He said, I was dreaming, and they have taken me to the shrine where they are going to slaughter me. He said they cover my face, but I could see because I was dreaming the man with the sword. And he said, he said, what to say? One, two. So that one has raised a sword to cut him. Now that's how some people sleep and they will not wake up. Before counting those numbers, before finishing counting those numbers, I called. And he just looked just how. By the authority of God, whoever is planning to kill you, all your enemies shall begin to kill themselves by themselves in the name of Jesus. They shall destroy themselves by themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. What of Mordecai to Esther? Without Mordecai, Esther wouldn't have become what he became. You understand god will give me another time when i will come back i will just talk to you about the remaining three pillars because there's a pillar of knowledge and wisdom there's a pillar of bad right pillar of bad right like when you look at the second chronicles chapter 24 verse 1 we spoke about joas at seven years he became king why should a seven year old become king because there's bad right it is his bad right in, 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 yes, in 2 Chronicles chapter 25 verse 1 talking about a Messiah a Messiah was 25 years when he became king, why? because it's bad right 2 Chronicles chapter 34 verse 1, spoke about Josh, jo, uh, Josiah Said Josiah was 8 years when he became king, how can 8 year old become king because it was his bad right it's a pillar pillar of bad right but unfortunately some people they don't hold that pillar pillar of bad right you know our pillar of bad right Jesus said the Lord and the God said ye are gods Psalm 82 verse 6 and all of you are the children of the most high ye are God and uh, in Exodus 7 verse 1 the Lord spoke to Moses he said see I have made you God over Pharaoh Oh my God, and Aaron, your brother shall be your prophet. And once Moses had that word, he had no fear anymore. He would go. Oh my God. Exodus 8, verse 3. He went to he went to Exodus 8, verse 1. He went to Pharaoh. He said, Don't say the Lord, the God of Israel. Let my people go. That they should oh my God. That they should hold feast for me. Let my people go that they will stop me. Exodus 9, verse 1. He went there. Exodus 10, verse 3. Let my people go. He was said that for how long will you be neglecting the word of God? For how long will you be lingering? Listen, he was addressing Pharaoh as God. That is your birthright. Yeah, God. And all of you are the children of the most high. Prince Williams is in the United Kingdom. I have never heard it. I live in the United Kingdom. I've been living ever since 1996. You king, oh my God. Prince Williams will not do a wrong job. Prince Williams will not say my my boss has, 
has been my pocket is empty Prince Willow will not be because he's a royal man why is where is your royalty Jesus is the king you are the children of king and you are a royal you are princes and princesses use your bat rise to take over use your bat rise to excel use your bat rise to transform this nation use your bat rise to make it alive this is my bat rise yeah God and Jesus Christ even repeated it he said did he not say that ye are God oh my God oh my God John 10 verse 32 he said did he not say ye are God and all of a sudden he said but, and if he say ye are God and the scripture cannot be broken ah uh ah -uh. God has said it scripture cannot be broken this was the one who said it he cannot deny himself he cannot say I did not say it anymore because he is God by, for by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie I will now cling unto it and I will say this is my birthright because you have said it Hebrews 6 was 18 I know that I will excel I know that you will fulfill your purpose you will fulfill your destiny you will make it in the name of Jesus rise up on your feet I bless you in the name of Jesus every ministry begin to excel in the name of Jesus go and take over territories go and take over every region go forward in the name of Jesus go forward in the name of Jesus take the territories take the territories for God take the territories for Christ say it pray now pray for your ministry pray 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 you have your birth right you have your birth right where you are born where you are born again you are born to eat you are born to rule you are born to rule you are born to excel you are born to take dominion you are born to dominate you are born to walk you are born to move forward you are born to move mountains you are born to throw out you are born to uproot you are born to take dominion move forward move forward move forward move forward in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus move forward take over territories take over territories take over kingdoms in the name of Jesus take over territories thank you father blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray let me just clearly see this because the Lord is moving here the man in the white in white the Holy Spirit minister to me and said to you when the war in Israel when the war is subsided or subdued you must be in Jerusalem God said that go to the Holy Land go and bring everything your heart desire to God over there from there God said he will take you to the nations but the way I'm looking at it it comes first though your eye looks abroad but it comes first that is the foundation and if the foundation is solid you can see how the, the house will be really really strong don't don't jump it up you will see how if you will be coming and do this do this and the Lord said set your mind on Jerusalem you are going there to praise him and to pour out your hearts to God and if you're over there because he wants to use you and the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions that's what Ibrahim 17 said so that is what I heard the Lord said to me when the, when the war is subdued make sure you go there you see how it's going to happen 
Because God will use people for you. If you say, I don't have money to go there, you see how God is going to make it happen. You are going there to pour out your heart. I saw that you have a ministry. Truly, you have a ministry. You have a ministry. And majority of you have suffered a lot in the ministry. But this is the time to move in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, the, the two of you, you have, uh, I'm so sorry when I say the two of you, you are ministers of God. But you have something in common. You have international ministry. But the Lord said, when it happens, don't forget God. Don't forget how you have started. You have started well. Oh. Ha. You, are, you are preaching the right message. Oh. And you are hoping in God. But God said, I will lift you up. But when he lifts you up, don't let anybody snatch away that good message, right message. Because God told Moses in Exodus 25 verse 40, he says, see to it that you make it according to the pattern show you on this mountain. There is a pattern. No? Don't change that pattern. You don't need to build university because others are building university. You need to win souls to his kingdom. And you see how God is going to fulfill his word in your ministry. I pray for every one ministry. I say your ministry will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe another time is coming when we'll be able to come together. But remember, you need to use your birthright. Ye are God. And all of you are the children of Israel. You are royal. God bless you.